Today I share the story of my life, an incident that changed me completely. My whole life changed. I was teaching at a university in Mumbai, and every day on my way to the university, I would see these groups of children at the railway station. And I always wondered, who are these children? They intrigued me. So one day I walked up to these kids and said, hello. They looked at me and ran for their lives. I ran after them saying, I'm not a policewoman. I will not arrest you. I just want to talk to you. So they stopped, they turned around, they came to me and they told me their names, what they do and where they came from. Since then, every evening, I spent my evenings with them, having upteen cups of tea and peanuts, sharing stories. They shared their stories with me as much as I shared my stories. But what I was listening pained me deeply in my heart. These were children who left homes because of domestic violence and extreme poverty. And they left homes and they came to an alien city which was hostile and pretty rough. But these children, they were so positive. They had such resilience power. They were so accepting and generous. And what dignity. It really inspired me. And I started reflecting on my life. I mean, I had so much, and yet I wasn't satisfied. These kids had so little, and yet they were positive about their future. I decided then that I would like to work with these children. I left my job in the university and moved to Delhi. While at Delhi, I did a study to find out more about street children, to get an insight into their lives, what are their problems. And I did get a better understanding about the street children. But then my study was not over. I traveled across India and met five fascinating pioneers who had started programs for street children in India. They were very generous. They shared their knowledge, their learnings, their failures, their successes. Those stories inspired me. I could have never got it from any other textbook or research paper. I came back clearer in my mind, but then I knew that the organization that I would start would be based on democratic principles. An organization that would respect children's voices and children's participation would be the core value of this organization. And while working with the children on the streets, I observed that the children spent all their money at the end of the day. And I, it concerned me. Why are they not putting away some money for, the, for tomorrow? So I asked them, why don't you save? They said, save? Where is the safe place for me to keep money? If I keep the money in my pocket, the bullies come and take it away. They steal it, they snatch it, so it's better that we spend all the money. And I realize, no, there has to be something wherein these children can not only save money, but also learn how to manage their money. And it was the time when globally, microcredit was the buzzword. But deep within my heart, I knew that was not the way to go. 
needed another, another path. And that's when I thought of the children's development kazana, a cooperative banking by children for children. I spoke about it to quite a few people, and they thought I was crazy. They said, children having their own banks? You must be crazy. But there was one organization called National Foundation of India who believed in me and believed in my idea. And they gave me a check of 200,000 rupees and said, go ahead, Rita, start your program. I took that money and I went to the kids, had a discussion with them. I said, how about having your own bank, a cooperative bank? The kids were excited. They said, are you saying we can have the same bank like you guys have? I said, sure, just the same. They said, OK, when do we begin? <laughs> Typical of children. I said, well, the day you draw up the rules for this bank as to who can be a member, for what purposes will you give an advance, who will manage it, who will be a manager, you can have your children's development kazana. The kids went, drew up their rules, came back to me, and shared it. I read it, and my heart sank. Not a single child could become a member of CDK, not even the drafters. What were the rules? If you spoke bad language, you can't be a member of the bank. If you were a bully, you can't be a member of the bank. If you fought, you cannot be a member of the bank. If you smoked, you will not be a member of the bank. If you didn't do your homework, you can't be a member of the bank, and so on and so forth. And I said, oh, wow. Now, what are we going to do? So I said, before you finalize these rules, can we have a meeting, you know, discuss? Oh, sure, sure. So they sat, had this flip chart, and they went through those rules, and they quickly realized that not one of them can become a member of this, so they struck it all off. <laughs> but, but they kept two of them. One of it, they said, if a child is a substance user, he cannot or she cannot be a member. They can become a member when they give up substance. The other, they said, any 16-year-old and above, the kid can take an advance to start a business, but it has to be ethical business. No cheating. The other thing they said, you can't take the money and start a business selling pornographic stuff or materials or substances. And that's how the CDK began. The, the, the CDK is a life skill education program. Because everybody asks me, what is children's development kazana? Children's development kazana is teaching children how to manage money, how to prioritize their needs, how to budget, basics of accountancy, basics of understanding that what advances you can give about business plans that are feasible and viable of entrepreneurship. That's what Children's Development Kazana is all about. They have managers, and the managers are the children themselves who are trained in management and basic principles of banking. As you can see in this photograph, some of them are sitting there who are the managers of this bank. They have two accounts. They have a current account and a savings account. Current account, you can put the money and you can take it back. But the savings account, you keep it so that your capital grows and you can get an incentive. Now, the managers are great communicators. So when a member comes with the 10 rupees and says, OK, put 2 rupees in the savings, 8 rupees in the current, the manager would not take that. They will negotiate. And they'll see if they can put 5 rupees in the savings and 5 rupees in the current account. 
There was this one incident. One 13-year-old guy, he came up to the manager and said, look, I want to withdraw about 800 rupees. He said, for what? He said, I want to buy that fancy jacket which has all those spikes and studs. You know, it makes me feel cool. He said, but you already have a jacket. He said, yeah, but my best friend has that stud jacket. He said, if he's your best friend, negotiate with that friend of yours, tell him to give your jacket and you wear it for 10 days looking cool and a hero and give your jacket to him. He thought that was bright. And so he saved his 800 rupees and he didn't, give, didn't buy his second jacket. The, the kids also give advances. They give advances to children for school fees, to buy their books, to buy their uniforms, maybe clothes, shoes, but also for medical emergencies. Even when their parents need money for medicines, it is the CDK kid who takes an advance and gives it to their parents. Now these children also, those who are about 16 years and above, they can start enterprises and businesses. Mind you, these kids are taught about business management. They're also taught about entrepreneurship. So here there was this kid who put in an application. The application was perfect. It was a viable, feasible uh, proposal, but the advance committee refused to give him the money. He was pretty annoyed. So he again sent his application, but they rejected it. He was so furious, he went to the social worker and said, you know what, I think those advance committee members need to be removed. I've got this very good proposal, but they're not giving me the advance. So the social worker read it, and yes, it's true. So they, he went to the advance committee members and asked them, why do you not giving your member this advance? They said, the proposal is good, it's viable, feasible, but our member, we know him, he's the most irresponsible person, and we won't give him that money. The day he becomes responsible, we will give him the advance. So what were the kids learning? They were learning to be responsible, not only for their own money, but the money of all their members. There was also one kid who took an advance and he started a fresh juice stall. He was making fantastic money. He was paying his advance, but the advance committee members said, let's go and look him up. Let's find out how he's doing. So they came. Yes, he had his fruit stall, he had a big board which said fresh juice, one glass, 15 rupees. But the advance committee went around his counter and they found this big bottle of tank. And what was our friend doing? He was putting tank and mixing it with fresh juice and selling it as fresh juice. The <laughs> advance committee member said, sorry boss. This is not ethical. So he said, but this is business. You need to make money, profit. Yes, but CDK does not promote this kind of unethical business. You have to do ethical business. So rub that fresh juice, put tang plus fresh juice, and he had to do it. And he did it. Today we have a number of kids who have their own businesses. Some of them have boutiques, some of them have shops selling mobile accessories, but we also have some of the members who, through the CDK, were able to take advances to do their professional courses. So we have chefs, we have um, chartered accountants, we have software programmers, nurses, and these are all children who could actually access the resources to complete their education. These are children who dreamt with their eyes open. They wanted to reach for the stars, and CDK was the lifeline that gave it to them. <laughs> My friends, today this program is not just in India. It is in, in 
eight countries. We have it in Ghana, in Madagascar, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, Nepal, and Sri Lanka. These are kids who are changing their destinies. They have taken charge of their lives. The children who are so poor and marginalized, they were not holding their hands out for arms. They were not waiting for the government to come and give them anything, but they did it themselves. They changed their life scripts. The scripts that even their parents and grandparents couldn't change. They have come out of generational poverty, but their children did something more too. These children in today's world where there is so much of conflict and strife, these children have crossed the countries and continents, cultures, religions, social realities, and political context to become collectives, to become friends with each other. They have accepted each other. They don't see differences, but rather they see similarities among themselves. They have collectively and cooperatively seen to it that they can reach for their dreams. They have been listening to their inner voices. Nobody told them to stop it. The CDK gave them that space. CDK gave them that opportunities. And what is CDK anyway? CDK is these children. It's not butterflies. It's not me. But it is owned by these children. And they have inspired a number of children as much as they have inspired me. Every day when I meet these kids, I say, Wow, I wish you know, many more children could hear and listen about CDK. And I really hope that we can have a CDK in Oman one day. And perhaps we will be there to support you. Thank you very much. Shukran. <laughs>